All right, everybody, welcome back. This is Peter Renna with another edition of Dollar Bin Digging for you this week. Now, I struggled a little bit in coming up with a topic for uh, this week's article, and uh, I kicked around a few ideas. And if you've been following me the last couple of months, you know I'm all about Star Wars uh, as of late. But finding Star Wars books for a dollar is not getting uh, any easier, uh, especially in, you know, in this market, as everything and everything is basically uh, blowing up. I mean, that said, I did happen to find this Mace Windu 5 for a uh, dollar today and uh, already sold it. But that not that's here, neither here nor there. Uh, coming up with a topic, I'm thinking of what else could uh, uh, we be looking at right now? And given that uh, we haven't seen anything from the MCU in basically, I don't know, what is it, almost two years now? I mean, when was Spidey Far From Home? I think that was the last uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe movie that we've had. And while things have been pushed from you know Black Widow and The Eternals, and uh, basically every film has been moved at least a year, we're running up to the point where we're now we're getting the Disney Plus shows just about to drop. And uh, in that void, I feel Star Wars really picked up the slack. And I think that's why uh, a lot of books in the market have uh, heated up, because as great as Mandalorian was, it really filled that that niche in in the marketplace where we weren't getting anything. I mean, DC had their shot, but uh, they they missed the mark and didn't take advantage of the of the you know the gap that Marvel left everybody. So now we're in a position where in about two weeks we're going to start getting Disney Plus shows on uh, about the Marvel Cinematic Universe, and I feel we're going to start shifting back uh, a little bit. You know, from some, I don't think the Star Wars books are going anywhere. Don't get me wrong, but I think a little bit of the attention is going to just start pointing more back. Uh, towards the MCU uh, in the coming months because we've got content on the way. One way or another, stuff is coming our way. So, please, again, this uh, little video is just here to accompany my article over at uh, comicbookinvest.com. So if you aren't checking out the site for all the best comic book content out there, you are doing yourself a disservice. So please, just take a few minutes, if you aren't doing it already, and check out some of the great articles we got over at uh, CBSI. So, with that... So with that all said, uh, let's just get right into the list here. And uh, I'm going to focus on, again, the, these Disney Plus shows for the next couple of weeks. At least that's my loose plan. So uh, for this week, uh, I'm looking at uh, WandaVision. Uh, I hate that title. I, I don't know why. It just sounds cheesy to me. It rubs me the wrong way. I mean, I get it. I mean, Vision and the Scarlet Witch would be way too long, a, a little too many syllables in there to be, to be punchy and be catchy. But WandaVision just really doesn't do it for me. But that said, I'm very intrigued by this show and uh, what we may be having coming our way, that where they could be going from anything from, uh, I don't know. I really don't know where, where they're going with this, judging off that trailer. There's, there's a lot left unsaid and uh, unknown, but there are a lot of hints to things we will be getting. And one of those first things that we can see that we are getting is Monica Rambeau. And I, I find that very interesting. Now, my first pick is not easy to find. Granted, this book heated up, uh, I don't know, with the first Captain Marvel movie when we saw that uh, her, her mom was, a, you know, Carol Danvers' a flight partner and uh, also went by the, you know, call sign of Photon. So this Avengers Unplugged number five is not an easy book for you to find in dollar bins, but you still might find it out there. This is an oddball Avengers book that a lot of places still just don't know what it is. You can just find it in a cheap bin because it's just thrown in there with like kids books and, and what have you. It's got that crazy 99 cent sticker on it. This uh, awful 90s era Captain Marvel, Marvel uh, version there on the cover. And uh, again, this is not the greatest book in the world to have. It is already pretty pricey if you, if you wanted to uh, invest in it at the market, which I wouldn't recommend doing because realistically, all this is is a first name appearance. I mean, she basically changes her name from Captain Marvel to Photon. And you know, take that for what you want. If you want to put your money into something like that, you, you go right ahead. But personally, I, I don't really see that as much of a key, the, uh, a name change personally. So like I didn't throw a ton of money into Avenging Spider-Man 9 just because she, she became Captain Marvel instead of Ms. Marvel. It's a cool issue and would be nice to have, but uh, definitely not worth throwing the amounts of money that were it was demanding at a time. And the same goes for this one here. And again, if you keep your eyes out, you might be able to find this on the cheap end. And one of the ways you might be able to sneak it 
out of there is that this is actually a flip book. I don't, I don't know if a lot of you knew that, but this is a flip book. And it's on the other side, it's Untold Tales of Spider-Man number 10. And this you might be able to find because who's going to care about an Untold Tales Spider-Man number 10? So if this book is flipped this way in your bin, you might be able to find it uh, without anybody even knowing what the heck it is. So just keep an eye out for that. Because again, we know we're getting Monica Rambeau in this and uh, she is you know, going to lead us probably possibly into some more. I believe there's rumors she's going to be maybe in Doctor Strange too. And it's a character we're going to see going forward in one way or another. So, I mean, this would be a fun book to have. Don't get me wrong, but I wouldn't pay top dollar, which is why I recommend just keeping your eyes out in, in those cheap bins because you still might be able to find it. And uh, you, you can even see in the, uh, in the trailer that she also teases into my next pick with this necklace. It's kind of hinting at the possibility of us getting sword, which uh, we, we know was introduced in Astonishing X-Men. Now, I'm going with my pick here is Astonishing X-Men 6 because this is a book that's a little bit later in the run, and uh, I've seen tons of these. Th this is not a hard-to-find book. There were, I think, over 130,000 of these things printed. I've seen them in dollar bins over and over again. Basically, the whole first 12 issues or so of this run, uh, it was very popular and very well printed. So not hard to find, not at all. Now, her first appearance, uh, Abigail Brandt, uh, is, we'll start with, was cameoed in uh, issue number three. But this is a cameo in the truest sense of the word. She's one panel, she's unnamed, she's there with Nick Fury, just kind of chilling in the background, does have one line, but that's basically it. Uh, we get another one panel back last page in issue five, where again, we get, you know, her there amongst all these other S.H.I.E.L.D. agents, still not named, but it's another cameo there in issue five. So those, if you want to find them, again, you might be able to find those for a dollar as well. Go have at it, go grab them. This is a great run just to read, by the way. Joss Whedon uh, did some interesting stuff with the uh, X-Men in, uh, in this series. So I recommend picking up even just to read it. But number three, number five, you see these one page or one panel cameos of her, but it's really an issue six is where you get Abby Brand's first full appearance as well as her introducing the concept and this team of S.W.O.R.D., which is the, I don't even want to get into the whole uh, acronym of it, but it's like sentient world uh, organization, I forget. Doesn't matter, unimportant, unimportant detail at this point. This is a book you should be able to find still in a lot of bins because again, there's a lot of them. So please, again, don't pay top dollar for these things. You, you can check out the article where I go into a lot of the pricing and uh, the CGC census numbers and whatnot, but, this is a book just to keep an eye out for. I mean, this is a gorgeous cover with the red and Colossus returning in this little series and Kitty Pride. Great read, great run, but interesting first appearance to keep an eye out for that ties into this WandaVision series uh, with book number two. Now, I'm going to shift real quick over to the next pick, which goes back to a series that litters dollar bins, litters dollar, dollar bins, and that's the West Coast Avengers. Now, this first one that I have is issue 45, which, again, uh, already saw some heat. So that's another thing you can find a lot in dollar bins. Some books might have heated up once before and then have just gotten forgotten about and just kind of fell back down the ladder uh, to a point where they're back in bins again because nobody's paying attention to them anymore. And uh, this issue 45 is when we get the first vision in this uh, colorless or the white version, which, again, it got popular with Endgame when we saw you know, Vision basically die and... We saw images of him without the, you know, traditional uh, color scheme with the red and the green and yellow. And I also then got some little fun little tidbit that we got in this trailer is that we are going to get the uh, the OG costumes, even if it's just in this imaginary world or Halloween time, whatever, with an old school looking vision, Paul Bettany in the old school vision outfit, as well as uh, Elizabeth Olsen in the uh, traditional Scarlet Witch with the... Uh, red headdress and uh, cape and what have you here. Uh, so still love this uh, Adam Hughes cover, by the way. Uh, but in this issue 45, which is a callback to his original appearance in Avengers 57, as you can see the uh, gorgeous, gorgeous first uh, first appearance cover there. Uh, it's a fun little homage there. So outside of that, we get, you know, Vision being returned. We have him basically being brought back to life after, you know, his apparent death in, in the comics. And this is something that we're also kind of dealing with, I suppose, in some fashion in the show, because, you know, Thanos taking out the, the Mind Stone basically ended Vision. And uh, I, this 
could be dealt with in some way on this show, or maybe not. I don't know. But in this comic, which I also think is very interesting, is that we get the return of Vision and, you know, Scarlet Witch's surprise. And, you know, they get the nice warm embrace. But he does not remember anything. His memory is basically wiped. So this this is a, this is a hit to her, you know, and we already know she has a fragile psyche as it is, uh, and what leads into a lot of things we know that happens in the comics with M Day and what have you. This could be like one of those first, you know, first gut punches that really uh, takes a hit at her, and she's extremely powerful. So this is just a book that you might be able to find back in those bins again. West Coast Avengers, again, there's tons of them in there, tons of them out there. A lot of people don't really save the West Coast uh, Avengers books these days, so. You know, just keep an eye out for it, just for that cover alone. It, it's it's worth grabbing. And I'm going to stick with this topic and this title and uh, hit up with my last pick. And uh, I'm going with issue 52 uh, with this master pandemonium, pandemonium uh, you know, appearance. Now, uh, I know a lot of people, you can also keep an eye out for his uh, master pandemonium first appearance in issue four. And uh, that one, you get the introduction to this crazy character who, you know, I mean, maybe we see him in this WandaVision series in, in some form, because he does play an important role in the Vision and Scarlet Witch's, you know, history and their story, uh, most notably in how he basically becomes the end of their twins. Now, we saw in the trailer for this show that we are, there's an image of them holding the twins, so we are getting, you know, the twins in some way, and uh, you can just see here in this crazy panel that... Uh, yeah, he's baby got baby hands. Like he's got the twins on his hands. It's a really weird character. Pick it up if you can find it. I mean, again, first appearance is issue four. I think he has a, a smattering of other appearances throughout the run. But I'm going with 52 because this kind of tells the backstory of, of what happened here with with the twins. And uh, as you know, we also are getting rumors that we might be getting a young Avengers. So these twins could become important in some way. So you got Wiccan and you got Speed. Uh, in that uh, Vision of Scarlet Witch 12, which is another book that I've covered before, you should keep an eye out for it in the bins, and you can sometimes find it still, even now. Uh, that's her first appearance as, a, as you know, as babies. But in this Avengers issue, uh, was it 52? Uh, again, we get this uh, tale of how this kind of ties back to this weird demonic realm and how these their souls were pulled from from Mephisto in some way, which again, we see a Mephisto appearance here, which ties in. And this is another character where we've been getting rumors could be hitting the MCU. So this is an issue that hits a lot of points of rumors and things people are looking at, uh, story-wise at least, with what could be coming in the MCU. So maybe we get Mephisto, maybe they tie this in in some way. Maybe this is how the concept of uh, the devil of the Marvel Universe is basically uh, introduced. And uh, I know there's also a lot of speculation that the character of Agnes is actually Agatha Harkness uh, in uh, in this series. And that's also a possibility as well. I mean, you could see she was uh, in that Halloween wearing her witch outfit. So it definitely ties together. And that makes a lot of sense for that's who she is. And she is also another character who plays an important role in this storyline and in this issue. As she basically explains what happened with the twins and with their souls. Great, great a crazy comic book comic book storyline, crazy comic book storytelling, but she explains the whole thing uh, in, in this issue of how their souls were apart, you know, and then pulled back and and whatnot, and how she was taking these memories away from Wanda so she wouldn't have to deal with the pain. And this is, again, this is how we basically got M-Day, is that this loss of her children that she was forgotten about and taken away from her comes rushing back, and that grief caused her to no more mutants. Uh, maybe this is a... a backdoor way into them eventually giving us mutants again in the Marvel Universe. I don't know. Who knows where we're going with this uh, as an endgame, basically. But uh, again, for a dollar, this is an issue you can find out there. So hopefully I've given you enough interesting story stuff in there that might make this intriguing enough to pick up. But it's just something you should keep an eye out for because, again, I'm really looking forward to this series. Uh, it's coming in like two weeks. I think it's January 15th. This is going to start hitting Disney Plus, and then from there we're going to get more more series basically over the next few months. Like they're not really leaving a lot of empty space, you know, in, in between this. So for the next couple of weeks, as far as my dollar bin digging goes, I think I'm going to look at some books that you still might be able to find in those cheap bins tied into these Disney Plus series because I mean that's basically what we're getting uh, for the next few months. Because as much as again, I love Star Wars. And with all the announcements, we're not getting any Star Wars for a while. We got to wait till, uh, you know, maybe really the Book of Fett. Well, Book of Boba Fett. I really wish they would lose the Boba and just go Book of Fett. But 
yeah, that's still not to December. So we got a whole year until we're getting any more Star Wars. Uh, I'm really looking forward to the series. I, I think it's going to be uh, very interesting to see the concepts and ideas they start introducing in the Marvel Universe. And uh, who knows where we're going to go from there. So, I don't know. Thanks for checking in. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. Please like and subscribe to my channel, as well as Tales from the Flip Side. Uh, give us any comments that you might have, things you want to see, things you like, things you don't like. Um, I'm open to suggestions. Uh, if anything, you guys know that I definitely take suggestions, and I, I will run with them if I uh, think they're good ideas. So please, you know, engage. Be part of the community with me, and uh, let's all just keep having fun in this uh, this whole comic world, because uh, I'm looking forward to a better 2021, because uh, 2020 was pretty rough. So uh, here's to a good year.